Hello everyone. Happy Monday. Happy world after, no, goodness. Happy day after World Mental Health Day. There we go. I can form sentences, I promise. Um, if you guys have never met me before, hello. It's nice to meet you. My name's Beverly Smith. And I am an actor and a mental health advocate located in Los Angeles. And I'm really excited to have a conversation with you all today. Um, I always like to start by asking how everyone is. So let me know how you're doing. I can see your comments and thoughts and all of the things in um, like on the screen. So if you want to let me know how you're doing, give me some like thumbs up. Let me know where you are joining in um, from. Hi, Jesse. Um, so I personally uh, do not have anything um, about borderline personality disorder because I'm not a licensed therapist. I just um, talk about my own mental health experience and my uh, organization. But um, the Mighty has a lot of other resources about borderline personality disorder. So I would strongly recommend that you check it out. And you're also from Hollywood, but Hollywood, Florida, I assume, since you have FL, Hollywood, Florida. So yeah, check out, um, if you just go to the Mighty's website and you just type in borderline personality disorder, they will give you some other, um, some other things to check into. Hi, Rick, it's lovely to see you again. It's actually been longer than two weeks. I was supposed to go on last Friday and it was, um, that was when we had the like crazy Facebook social media shutdown last Monday. So that's why we postponed till today. So it's really lovely to see everyone. Um, hi, Cynthia. Thank you for checking in, letting me know that you're doing okay. Um, hello, Amy. Uh, thank you for asking how I'm doing. I'll get into that in a second. Um, hi, Mohammed from the UK. Hi, Blanca. Fighting depression today is not a good day. Thank you so much for sharing that. Vicky, hi. Lovely to see you again. Vicky's another one of my regulars. And hello, Michelle from Arkansas. Lovely to see you all. So um, if you guys have never done this with me before, I do these conversations every other Monday, um, at least right now. They, the schedule may be changing, but all of that information will be shared um, and you guys will have access to it. Um, as they have just put up on the screen, that is my mental health organization, more than you see. Um, with that mental health organization, I like to talk about non-traditional mental health resources, such as songs, books, TED Talks, po other podcasts, all sorts of things about um, mental health and the idea that there's not just like one thing that helps us get through um, a difficult day, that there's a lot of different things that we might need in order to like have in our mental health toolkit. And I like to encourage people to figure out what is in their toolkit and talk about it um, right here with you all. So I'm really excited to have you all today. Um, and it looks like we've got two people. So Awaya says, sorry, I missed many podcasts. And Megan says, sorry that you missed the podcast today. First of all, hello from Canada. Um, second of all, so actually, if you're referring to my podcast, More Than You See's podcast, um, we're actually on a hiatus right now. The last um, episode was released in the beginning of August, and we will be coming back um in the beginning-ish of November. That's when my podcast is going to be coming back, but there's a lot of old episodes, so I strongly recommend that you go and you check out some of those old episodes um, because I discuss all sorts of uh, really interesting things, at least in my opinion. So um, hello, Sharice. It's lovely to see you again. I recognize your name as well. And again, I just, I love to see my regulars um, and, uh, I've got my dog right here on my feet. Um, he sometimes makes an appearance, so I'm just excited to, you know, have this conversation today. So, um, Amy asked me how I'm doing. I'm struggling. To be honest, last Monday, I was really glad that, um, last Monday social media was down because it was, um, Last Monday was not a good day and it was going to be really hard to like 
come on here. I would say, you know, a lot of times I talk about the fact that like, oftentimes when I come on here, even if I'm not feeling the best, I come on here and I chat with you all. And it's just so wonderful and lovely to um, talk to you all about my feelings, about how you're feeling. And I feel like having this community is like one of the best things for my own mental health. Um, but I kind of, last Monday, I was in such a bad I was having such a bad mental health day that I honestly didn't want to talk to anyone. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today. And I also, so like when you're feeling the need to isolate, um, I kind of want to, you know, deconstruct that a little bit because the other thing that I was kind of feeling is um, not this weekend, but the weekend before. So the weekend before last Monday, I just like had some really difficult conversations with some people um, ended up ending a relationship, which was really hard. And so I was feeling the need to isolate, but I was also feeling very numb. And I felt like I didn't actually, I didn't have an understanding or a grasp on my feelings. I just kind of felt nothing. And I want to talk about that today. Um, as far as like, what do you do when you're just, when you know that you should be having feelings about a situation but you're so overly stimulated with your feelings that you just don't feel anything. Um, so that's what I want to talk about. Um, uh, Michelle, lovely to meet you. Thank you for joining us today. And Carissa, um, what a wonderful question. Carissa asks, how do I, how do you choose therapists for anxiety? Um, number one, I would say that it's so important to think about the fact that choosing a therapist is kind of like choosing a romantic partner. Um, you need to be picky and you need to, you know, really like date a few therapists before you find your perfect fit. And as in any relationship, um, something that my therapist reminds me of is that um, I like I have a relationship with her as well, just like you do with friends, just like you do with family members, anyone that you are connecting with on a personal level, that is some form of relationship. And so it is so important to consider that and then consider what you personally want out of a relationship. Do you want someone who is going to have a dialogue with you? Do you want someone who is going to just mostly listen? Do you want someone who's going to give you advice? Like the whole idea that like therapists don't give you advice or shouldn't give you advice, that's not necessarily the case or that's not necessarily true. It's it's kind of like, again, going back to what you want out of a relationship. So I would say, Carissa, number one, I would write down what exactly you want to get out of therapy and what do you want to get out of this relationship with your therapist and then from there most therapists or i would say all therapists um often allow a free kind of like check-in session where it's maybe like a 15 minute call um where you kind of like get to know them on a personal level and just kind of have a dialogue and see if you, you know, work with that person. Um, and if you do, then, uh, then that's great to then like have a, an actual full session with them. But it is so important to have that original check-in session and, um, and just see how they're feeling about that because, or how you're feeling about them. Um, just like, again, just check in with yourself and be like, do I feel safe? Is this someone I want to share? my feelings with, um, and like have, have a deep, um, connection with, because that's what, you know, therapy is all about. And I would also just to like, you know, final thing I'll say on this is that, um, you know, therapists cannot prescribe medication that is, um, like you need to see a psychiatrist for that. So if you are thinking that you are potentially going to need to go on some medication for, um, for anxiety or for something like that, um, your therapist will not be able to prescribe that, but they probably will be able to refer you to someone um, who could prescribe medication if that's something that you choose to, you know, explore, which is um, always, I think, a you know, a good thing. Like I am, I am all for medication um, if uh, if that's something that you determine that you need for yourself. So. Um, I hope that that is helpful. Um, yeah, of course. It was wonderful. Thank you for the question. I think that, you know, again, these these dialogues are so important and having conversations with you all is um, like my favorite thing. So I love it. Um, 
So Rick, you shared that you're in isolation mode also. I mean, if you would like to, if you would like to describe that more or explore more, you are welcome to, um, you know, as I shared before, like I just went through, um, an ending of a relationship that was really hard and, um, and it definitely was one of those things where when I, when I'm feeling, you know, something shifting in such a massive way, um, it's just like a good point to like, just check in with yourself and like, kind of look at your life goals and like what you want out of life. And sometimes that requires a lot of isolation because you just kind of need to sit with yourself and figure out, um, yeah, how the current situation is making you feel and what you want to do about it. So, um, Vicky, just going back to the therapist question or conversation really quick. Vicky says, I was seeing a therapist for my anxiety and depression, but when the pandemic started, the session stopped insurance wouldn't cover virtual sessions. So it's been about a year and a half. At least you really need to start thinking of calling to see if office sessions are back. Yeah, man, Vicky, I'm so sorry to hear that virtual sessions weren't covered by insurance. It really, you know, I believe that you are in the U.S. Um, you know, you, you are a regular and I've seen you before. It's um, it's really, really unfortunate the fact that there is so many restrictions when it comes to um, when it comes to healthcare and when it comes to, you know, how we're feeling about this stuff. I think that it's. Um, yeah, I think that that that's, you know, something that I hope one day will will be easier for everyone um, is to have access to mental health and. Uh, mental health support. And hopefully, I mean, it would be lovely if it was free <laughs> because as it should be. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely call and see if the sessions are back. And I think that, you know, I have to say, like, I've actually been seeing my therapist virtually for the past, this whole time. Like I definitely, I did not stop sessions. Um, it was really important to me to still see my therapist during all of this last year and a half. And um, it was, yeah, it was really, it was really important to me. And, um, and it actually was like just as good for me as in-person sessions. So definitely if anyone's having some hesitancy about going to, a, or having a virtual session, I strongly encourage you to just check it out because, um, it is, I think just as valuable. So, um, definitely check that out. So, um, thank you, Rick, for sharing a little bit more. You're having some housing issues. I'm so sorry about that. I mean, I do think that, you know, and this is where it's, um, this is where it's so important to check in with ourselves about the things that we do have and then the things that we are having issues with, um, but to try, and I, I have to admit, I am not good at this. Like the whole, you know, focusing on gratitude and focusing on, you know, the positive things in my life. I know that I have many, um, but when I'm feeling like I'm in a depressive spiral, it's really difficult for me to want to focus on those things. And, um, and that's actually something that my therapist said to me last week was when I had a session with her about everything that was happening. And she was like, well, you know, like, it's just really important for you to focus on the other positive things in your life. And then I just, that actually sent me into an even deeper spiral because then I was thinking for a couple days about how I felt like there was nothing good in my life. And I think that it's important during those times to um, take the pressure off of yourself as far as like thinking that it has to be like a big thing that you are, um, you know, focusing on and instead just think about the basic things. So it was really important for me to remind myself that like, okay, if I'm feeling not grateful for, um, or if I, if I don't feel like I've got, um, a lot of, you know, big things going right in my life right now, like what are the small things going right? Um, like, you know, I have, I have a dog, um, who's like my therapy dog and he's the best thing that's ever happened to me. And, um, and so like having that has been like for him, for me, he is on my gratitude list every day. Um, coffee. I love coffee. So I honestly will often, if I'm making a gratitude list, write down coffee on there because that's, again, it's just like a small little thing. And it's just a reminder that, 
um, even when I'm feeling really, really, really shitty, that there still is some like goodness in, um, in my life in, in those small little ways. Um, we've got some really wonderful conversations going on in the comments. So we'll, I'm going to jump over to those. Um, thank you, Rick, for, for, you know, sharing some more. You're saying you're trying to lean into wonder versus pulling from an anxious past. I really like that. I think that it's really important to have this, uh, you know, focus on, or like to try and release the focus on what's in the past and instead just think about the things in the future that um, that are possible. I think that sometimes when we're feeling down, it's difficult to dream and to think about the positive, like the potential in our lives. And um, and I think that that's really important is like to not only be, gra be grateful for, at least for me, if I'm feeling depressed, to not only be grateful for, the things that I currently have, but also to dream and imagine um, the things that are potential for my future, because that also that sense of wonder, I think, is really important. Um, yeah. So, uh, Lisa, hi, you are a regular as well. Lovely to see you again. Um, I'm so glad that you found um, that you had a good therapist, that she's leaving the practice, but she's going to refer you to someone. Um, but I do think, you know, that it's so important, just like you said, that it took three therapists for you to find this one and you, you know, you need a, um, hopefully this next one will be a good fit. And if it's not, you just find another one again. Like it is so important, um, to really dive into that kind of thing. And, um, and just like, again, keep dating someone until you find someone good for you. Um, uh, and then really quick, I'm just going to jump to Oias's statement. Um, so Oias, you said, you know, should your therapist be a good listener? Absolutely. Definitely. But of course, it's so important to, um, you know, think about not again, not just like what is typical in um, in what a therapist is, but also like what you want out of a therapist. So yes, of course, a therapist should be a good listener. But again, do you want someone who you're going to have a dialogue with? Um, do you want someone who will answer questions about their own life? Do you not want that? Like it's really, it's, it should be something like very personal. So you can kind of figure out for yourself exactly what you want to need out of, um, out of your therapist. So um, Karen, thank you so much for sharing uh, what's currently going on with you. You said that you're in a depressive, depressive spiral right now, that you're doing your best to hold it together. I would love to know what you are doing in order to um, in order to hold it together. I think that like, you know, again, as I said, um, for me, <clears throat> so like for me last week was really was a really very difficult week. And I what I did was I absolutely packed my schedule with friend um hangouts like i worked with friends during the day like i had work sessions with friends during the day i saw friends of mine at night i literally completely for me that's the thing that makes me happy and the thing that makes me feel like i can get through anything is those friend interactions and now this week i'm actually feeling like i have pushed that too far. And now I need to, um, to take a break a little bit and, uh, and like have some alone time again. Um, so now I'm feeling like I want to isolate again. Um, and it's really important to just like, for me to just like recognize that as far as like, what is, um, you know, like what, what's working for me and, um, and what is, I feel like is going to help my depression right at that point. Um, so I'd be, you know, also Karen, you said you distract your brain with music. That's awesome. I mean, music I think is so important. Oh, and you play cards online. I do too. That's amazing. I am playing free cell right now. That is like my, um, my main thing that I do to distract myself when I'm feeling, when I'm feeling sad is that I play free cell and I watch um, I watch TV shows because I'm an actor and it's really, uh, it's the thing that makes me really happy. So I totally understand. And I think that this is where, this is exactly what more than you see my mental health organization is all about is figuring out those, those little things in your day that make you feel better 
Um, even if it's for a tiny bit of time, you just, it's just so important to like, yeah, just like focus on, um, focus on those things. And, uh, and, and it changes on a daily, um, you know, on a daily basis sometimes. And that's perfectly okay. Um, what do I watch? I watch, uh, currently I'm watching How I Met Your Mother or I'm rewatching How I Met Your Mother. Um, for me, I just like really like the distraction and the happiness and just, uh, comedy just, yeah, makes me, makes me feel good. Um, okay. Going back to some of the things. Um, first of all, George, hi, lovely to see you again. It has been a while and it's wonderful to see you. I love all of my regulars. It's so lovely to like have, you know, people that I've seen before and, um, and, uh, and it's so important to, um, to like have all of these new people in the community as well. So, um, and thank you, George, for sharing. You, you just shared that, uh, you, you lost a colleague last week, um, to suicide and, um, he was the joker in a group of people. You could never think that he could take his own life. First of all, thank you for sharing and being so vulnerable with us. I'm so sorry that you're going through that. That's just really, really difficult. Um, I have to say that, like, you know, I think that, um, with suicide, it is sometimes the people that we don't think. And that's why it's just so important to check in with our friends and, um, and to, you know, just be, um, diligent about, yeah, showing each other like love and respect and kindness. Um, because, you know, suicide is, um, is, is, uh, what they're now considering a disease. Like it's, it's, Sometimes it's just, um, it's just like, a, it's obviously like a very difficult thing. And it's just so important to like, let your friends and family know that you're there for them. Um, so thank you for sharing that, George, that must be, that must be really difficult. And thank you, um, the mighty for putting up the, uh, that, you know, um, hotline that's really, really important as well. Um, okay. So many amazing things here. So we've got, um, uh, Tracy, um, just going back to, it says that you have bipolar, um, and, uh, that your, your insurance covers psychiatry, but not therapy. Um, first of all, I would say, uh, this is something I've shared before a tool that I've shared before. So obviously there's all sorts of like online therapy options that are, uh, kind of have, have exploded during, during the pandemic, like better help, those kinds of things. I don't have any personal experience with those. So like, I can't, personally share anything about those, but, you know, I would, um, I would recommend, you know, checking those out if that's, uh, something that interests you. But the other thing that's like a hack when it comes to finding inexpensive therapy is that oftentimes any teaching college, so any, um, anyone who's actually getting their degree as a therapist has to do, um, you know, hours and hours and hours of sessions with real patients in order to get their certification. And they are, uh, um, get, uh, what's it called? Um, they like their, their, those sessions will be overseen by one of their advisors. Um, so if you contact a local college and see if they have uh, a therapy department there, or that there's people who are starting to be therapists and see if they do have, um, free or very discounted sessions. I've had friends who've done this in LA and have found incredible therapists for like $10, um, just because of that, um, because of that, um, experience. So I think that it's, that it's really important. Like that's a really good, like hack to find a, an inexpensive therapist. Um, that's really great. Um, thank you, Jimmy, for sharing that you suffer from severe anxiety and depression. You haven't been able to work. Um, you're waiting on disability. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's many people that you'll find. There's many people on here who have, you know, similar experiences to you. So thank you for sharing your story. And um, I'm sure that there's, you know, one of the, my favorite things about these conversations is, is the dialogue that happens offline where people um, resonate with something that someone else has said, and they um, then have a dialogue about it. So if someone is resonating with something that Jimmy says, I strongly recommend that you, um, that you guys have a discussion about that. Um, 
Yes. Okay. So yeah, so many, so many things again about the importance of therapy. Vicki says, um, I'm glad you've had the opportunity to do the session. Yeah, it definitely depression is getting um, is escalating. And so is isolation 100%. And I think that it's so important to also um, have a conversation about the fact that um, right now, I feel like everyone's depression is increasing. I think that we like, especially as we're going into the holidays, things are still like there's still lockdowns that are happening around the world. There's still so much, um, you know, stress and and just like uh, it's it's just still a very difficult time. So it's very important for you to like give yourself grace and space and understanding. If you're feeling depressed, you're not alone, and a lot of people are feeling that as well. So um, I just have to say that, like, unfortunately, we are still in a pandemic, and um, and that has consequences and um and anyone who already suffers from any kind of mental health difficulties this is certainly making things um even more exacerbated so if that is you it's okay because i'm right there with you and i completely completely understand um yes so amazing okay great so many conversations today um uh, Lisa, that's cool. Lisa just shared. She just did a Zoom call interview on Saturday with a favorite showrunner or creator of yours. That's very, very cool. Now I want to know what you watch, Lisa. What is what is your favorite television show to watch when you're feeling like you want to distract yourself or when you don't? I think that that's um, it's really important. Um, yes, I love Awaya says, I wish mental health could be free for all. Ugh. 100%. I completely agree. And um, and Karen, yes, I agree. I think The Mighty is such an incredible resource for all of us. And, um, and for anyone who hasn't um, had one of these conversations with me before, or if you're just new to The Mighty in general, number one, all of my past um, conversations like this, you can find on The Mighty if you just go to like past videos like on their Facebook or their YouTube channel. They're up there. You can see my face anytime you want up there. And then again, um, as I said, I have a mental health podcast where I discuss all sorts of different um, mental health conversations. And uh, there's 24 episodes already up. So I strongly recommend that you go and you check those out if that's something that resonates with you at all. Um, so yeah. And then thank you for for Vicky, that you're, you know, sharing a little bit more about your anxiety. You said that a problem with my anxiety is that you never learn to drive. You're 65, don't work and don't really have close friends, just your immediate family. Um, so it's housework, binge watching shows and playing games in your, on your phone and PS4. I mean, I think that it's, um, it is difficult sometimes when our lives are isolating. And um, I would say, number one, um, have you checked out at all, all of the like, like one of the best things about the pandemic is this idea that um, so many different places around the world have made um, the ability to like check these places out virtually. So like you could go and like check out the Met, whatever, um, you know, like the Met Museum online or uh, um, like, you know, do a virtual tour through Buckingham Palace, like those kinds of things, um, I think can, uh, like when I was feeling like really, um, depressed during, during complete lockdown, those were some things that really helped me. And obviously you don't need to, to drive. You just, you just stay in your house and you can kind of explore the world, which is really, um, kind of special, I think, in, in some really amazing ways. Um, so yeah, definitely. And again, we're, you know, more people are just talking about how, how important, um, you know, uh, therapy is. So thank you everyone for, for sharing that. And I would love to know if anyone has their own suggestions about what they look for in a therapist. Like if you have a therapist that you love, what's something that you love about your therapist? Um, I think that it's really, uh, yeah, it's really cool. And then, um, so here we go. So Carissa, this is why I love these conversations. Carissa is sharing in response to Vicky's conversation. 
that she barely drove herself. It's such a pain needing others to take you someplace. Um, but you switched back to an ID years ago and you're 46. And um, yeah, that's really cool. And then, oh, George, thank you so much. So George shared um, the uh, Acropolis Museum in, um, I don't know where that is, I assume in Greece somewhere. And so there we go. That's like a really cool virtual tour that you can do um, in, uh, yeah. And that's like, again, a good, good thing that you can do to like leave your house. Um, uh, okay, Stephen, I love this. Stephen says, seems to me that isolation is both a symptom and a trigger for depression. I completely agree with that. I also think that it is dependent, obviously, like with anything that comes with mental health and with physical health. Um, what's also specific, like whatever affects you may not affect someone else and vice versa. I think that that's very important. And I think that, you know, I, I agree in the fact that like, when I'm feeling, um, like I shared before, when I'm feeling really depressed, my first thing is to surround myself with as many people as possible. For me, I know that that's the thing that's going to help me feel better. And so I just like stack my schedule with friends and all sorts of different activities. So I distract myself, but I also know that I do get to a point where that, um, where it's so, uh, overwhelmed, like where, where I'm actually feeling way too stimulated by others. And then I need to isolate. So like for me, sometimes my isolation is actually a way for me to, um, kind of, uh, it's just like another stage in my depression sometimes is that I do need to like have that isolation time. And I think that sometimes that isolation time is when I'm actually able to check in with my feelings and, um, address some of how I've felt when I'm not able to address those things before, you know, like if I'm feeling really, um, really overwhelmed with something, you know, sometimes I, like I was saying in the beginning of this conversation, that sometimes when I'm feeling very overwhelmed, I don't, I can't actually figure out how I'm feeling. It's like, um, I just feel numb. I don't know if anyone else has had that experience before where I just like, I can't even put into words what my feelings actually are. And so then I think that it's really important when I then isolate myself to try and figure out what those feelings actually are. And that's when I'll really focus on journaling and all sorts of stuff in order to, yeah, just like check in with myself again. I think that's really, really important. Um, yes. So that's really great. I saw someone, oh, here we go. So Vicky shares, my therapist is um, validating of your feelings. Um, that's wonderful. And yes, totally something that's very, very important um, to, to have your, your therapist, you know, check in with you on. And then Carissa shares, um, it's hard to tell your therapist what happens when anxiety is at its worst. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I would, Carissa, do you have any sort of writing um, practice that you do or any court, any sort of, um, meditation practice that you do? Because I've found that sometimes when I'm feeling, when I am feeling just like anxious or, or like can't articulate what my feelings actually are, if I just write down, um, okay. Yeah, this as well. So Susan says, sometimes you think that the emotions are so complicated. There are no words in the human language to describe how you're feeling. What do you do then? So this is literally what I do if I'm feeling overwhelmed or if I'm feeling like I can't describe how I'm feeling or like, I just don't know. I will honestly take a blank sheet of paper or like get in my journal and just write and just go like, I, I feel nothing. I, I feel like my brain is empty. I feel like my heart is empty. I feel, I feel nothing. And I will just write, I feel nothing or like I feel empty or I feel whatever until I often then have a reaction to the fact that I'm feeling nothing. And then I may feel like, then I might write down like, um, I'm, I'm feeling really sad that I feel nothing. I feel like I should, 
I feel like I should be angry right now, but I'm not. I feel nothing. I feel like I should be um, whatever, but I feel nothing. Whatever it is, just like start then going down a little bit more of a rabbit hole as far as like what that nothing feeling means to you. And I have found that that often um, will open up a dialogue with myself, which is kind of the thing that I need to do at that point is to just like dive into why I'm feeling nothing and, um, and to explore that. So I don't know if that's helpful, but that's something that I would strongly recommend um, people do because I think that it's, I mean, it's very helpful for me. So um and uh yes so oh so and so carissa um uh you just shared that um that i i'm i'm assuming that carissa when your when your anxiety is at it were at its worst that's when you have a facial tick um that uh you had a stroke when you were younger and the doctor um helped fix your, fix your speech um, but it still, you know, shows up in a physical manifestation when you're feeling anxious. I mean, that's very normal. Um, I know that for me, my anxiety sits in my, in my stomach. And if I'm feeling really anxious or depressed about something, I just like can't eat or I'm just like not, um, I'm just not hungry. And so that's definitely something that has, uh, that I kind of know is, is going to be a physical reaction to my current state. And again, I think, I think one of the biggest things that's important about mental health and, um, just like your own personal mental health is preparing yourself for a future, um, experience. So like, you know, I've gone through relationship breaks up, breakups before. Um, so, you know, knowing that I was like going through that again, I was kind of preparing myself for what I knew was going to be happening and what was going to be coming. And I think that like that was very helpful for me because then I was able to kind of track what I was expecting from my body, if that makes sense. So, um, I think Carissa, the fact that like you have a, um, that you have a facial tick that, uh, becomes exacerbated with your, um, yeah, with your anxiety. I think that it's just like, really, it's just like a, a little, like extra special way to just like tell yourself what's going on. You know, like, I think that, that those kind of things, like, and I know if I'm feeling anxious in my gut, that there is like, that, that that's just like the situation is affecting me period. And that's it. And it's just like a good reminder that I'm human and that these things are affecting me. And like, I just try to like, leave it like that. I just try to like not have judgment about it and just be like, this means this, the end, you know, I think that that's, um, really important. And, Le and, uh, oh my goodness, what an amazing name. Uh, Lissy, how do you say your name? It's because it's not Lucy. Lissy. We're going to say Lissy. Lissy says, when my anxiety is bad, I get so tense that you can't even smile. I mean, that as well. I think that, um, you know, anxiety, this is something I've talked about quite a bit, but like anxiety is your body's way of um, like when your body's in fight or flight and your body is in that like tense moment of um yeah, of just of just feeling like you're confronted by a situation, you don't know how to escape it or process it or whatever, your body immediately goes into fight or flight because it thinks that it's being physically harmed or attacked in some way based on the way that our bodies have been constructed from, you know, the hundreds and hundreds of years ago when we were first um, uh, evolved into the people that we are, um, you know, that fight or flight was really important to our survival. And now it's, um, we often get anxious about things that aren't actually like literally affecting our survival. Um, but they, it, they still seem like they are. And so it's really important to, um, you know, think about the fact that, uh, that sometimes those, those things that you're anxious about aren't actually, um, 
you know, uh, what's it called, aren't actually going to like physically put you in harm's way. But sometimes you do feel like that. And that's perfectly okay. That's just part of, again, being human and just being um, part of this world that we live in. Um, So that's uh, just something to remind yourself. And that's where like meditation, breathing, circular breathing, anything like that can be really helpful to like allow your body to relax and remind yourself again that you're not in a, um, that you're not actually physically in a dangerous space. So I think that's really important. Um, And uh, yes, that's awesome. Lissy says that you take a shower and you try to look your best when you're feeling anxious. And I, I do the same with that as well. Um, Sometimes it's difficult to even want to do that. And that's perfectly okay too. So it's just, it's just where we are sometimes. Um, So I'm going to jump. Hawaii actually asked a really uh, lovely question that I would love to answer. So Hawaii asked, how much of a character you prepare for a movie or drama affects you? I mean, so first of all, can I say that, um, like, one of the reasons why I wanted to create more than you see, and one of the reasons that I have these conversations on the mighty, and that I am so openly honest about my own mental health, is because I think that it's so important for actors or for people who people put on a pedestal or think about them in one way, I think it's so important to show the other side of things and to show what, um, that like we go through struggles just as much, if not more than anyone else. And, um, and so I think that this question is really relevant and very important because, um, yeah, as an actor, I 100% get affected by characters. Um, I think that it's very important to find separation between where you begin and end and where that character begins and end it begin and begins and ends but um you can't not be affected by a character um i think that like just just the way that they say that you know if you're feeling really depressed all you should do is smile like just keep smiling and just keep smiling keep smiling keep smiling and then the um the smile will um uh, like eventually make you feel better. Like if, like, if you force yourself to smile, it will make you feel better. Um, that's like been scientifically studied, scientifically proven as a, as a real thing. Um, similarly, if you are playing a character that's really sad or whatever, it completely makes sense that that would then affect you as an actor and me as a person. Um, I do have to say, though, that conversely, most of the time, it actually, the characters that I play help me work through certain things. So I got divorced about three and a half years ago. And um, during that time, I actually played a character that was losing her father. And it was really cathartic and helpful for me to go through this character of someone who was losing her father while I was losing my partner. Because even though it was, um, you know, the, the actual circumstances were different, obviously the relationship was different, but at the core, there was still like sadness, regret, anger, um, bargaining, like all of the different stages of grief, like the, all of those things that I was experiencing as a person, Deborah, my character was also experiencing. And so for me, it was actually really valuable for me to be able to draw on those real life experiences and like bring that to the character. Now I would say that that does not work for every actor. For some actors, they have zero desire to bring their own um, personal stories into the character and they just like to use 100% imagination. Um, and again, it's just like to each their own, but for me, it's, it's very helpful. It's kind of like therapy sometimes for me to like use the, or to use the experience of a character, um, in order to kind of just like work through my own stuff sometimes. So I hope that's a good answer, Elias. Thank you for asking that question. Um, and yeah, so we've got about 10 minutes left. 
Um, I want to remind everyone that again, I do these conversations every other week, um, but uh, Mighty is switching to a new scheduling platform and stuff. So my schedule may be changing a little bit, um, but I uh, will definitely like, let you guys know if you follow um, more than you see on Instagram or if you follow me on Instagram, I really try to make sure that I share when I'm going to be going live on the Mighty. So make sure that you follow and then um, I, then you'll be able to, to know exactly when the next live will be, whether it is in two Mondays or or whatever. So, yeah. Um Carissa, thank you so much for sharing this very vulnerable story of yours. You said that your husband had a car accident weeks after losing your uncle to a heart attack. Um, I'm so sorry. I have lost um, some people also to heart attacks that are like very young. And it's just so horrible how, um, how you know, people's lives can, um, yeah, can just be changed in this dramatic way, even no matter the age. I think that... Uh, Sometimes I know I feel invincible or like I just have all the time in the world. And then those, um, yeah, those will, those different things kind of remind me that, um, that life is precious and that it's important to like, you know, have a purpose and do what you love and do it with the people that you love because, um, that's, uh, that's all we can do in life really, you know, is, is just like continue, giving back to the community and to the people around you that matter and um just do your best basically in whatever in whatever you're doing so and uh thank you Patricia, for sharing that you get emails from the mighty that's great so you must have signed up to find out when you come on awesome and um yes more than you see is also on facebook uh thank you for asking that vicky um so you can just search for more than you see on facebook and you can find me there as well and um and carissa thank you for sharing more about this you said the funeral was tough your grandmother in her 90s has buried a lot of her children that's just so sad i think that it really is um you know the loss of a child i don't have any children but um the loss of a child is is not something that anyone it, it's it's outside the like natural uh life cycle and so that just makes it you know, even, even harder, but Carissa, you showing up here and talking to all of us today, I think is so, so important. And that's what, you know, I think that this is why these conversations are so important is for us to talk about how we're feeling and what we're processing and, um, and yeah, to just like work through things together. So I would love to know, um, how everyone is feeling now, considering that we've had about an hour together. Um, I know that I always feel better whenever I have these conversations with you all. It reminds me that I'm, you know, not alone in my struggles. I think I shared earlier on in this conversation my um, desire to isolate, my desire to not feel my feelings and how it's been so important in order to um, to allow, to give myself that space of isolation if I need it, but also to dive into even those feelings of numbness and try and figure out what those feelings of numbness mean, what those feelings of numbness are teaching me and teaching, um, yeah, just teaching me about what's going on. I think that it's really, uh, really important to dive into all of our feelings, even if that feeling is nothingness, because that nothingness is still going to teach us something about what's going on inside of us. Um, oh, yes, I'm so glad that you feel lighter. That's wonderful. And Vicki, um, I'm so glad that you joined us today. It's wonderful to have you. I love having, um, you know, new, new and uh, all of my, you know, regulars. I think it's really, really important. Um, and thank you, Bonnie. Yes, for being here. Um, I do have to say, so like I, the, the More Than You See podcast is going to be coming back um, in like the middle of October, or not October, it is already the middle of October, which is crazy, um, the middle of November. And um, I do already have a bunch of conversations or like a bunch of topics that I want to dive into. But if there's a specific topic that you want me to discuss, please let me know. Um, you can either just like 
if you go to the anchor page for the podcast, you can leave me a message and, um, and then that will, I'll be able to then discuss whatever you want me to discuss on there. Or you can, again, just reach out to me, um, through Instagram and I can discuss a specific topic on there as well. Um, George, so wonderful to have you again. One of my regulars. Um, I really appreciate you being here. Um, Vicki, yes, I, I love that me sharing my experiences makes you want to share yours. I think that that's the importance of, um, of these conversations is to encourage ourselves to share how we're feeling with others. Um, because only through these conversations, can we all feel less alone? Can we all feel connected to the community? And I think that like, you know, mental health, like, our social structure focused so much online, especially over the last year and a half, has so negatively affected our mental health. And I think there's very, um, you know, big reasons for that. Um, it's really important to know that um, you aren't alone in feeling isolated, um, even though we are connected on so many, you know, new and different ways when it comes to social media and all those things, but the fact that we aren't tangibly around people as much anymore um, is is a real, is definitely draining on our mental health. So it's important to just like recognize that that's, if that's how you're feeling, that's perfectly okay. Um, and I guarantee that everyone who is on this conversation is feeling that way too. So I really appreciate you, um, you know, showing up and having that conversation with me today. Um, Barbara, lovely to have you here. Thank you. And your dog is adorable. Um, Rick, I think, uh, if, oh, what do you, I was smiling when you helped separate oneself from their behavior remarks. I don't know what you mean by that, but I'm glad that I helped you smile. Um, that makes me really happy. Um, Lisi, thank you for being here. It's wonderful to have you. I hope that you join us again. And um, Awias, uh, one of my regulars, it's lovely to see you again. Um, again, check out my uh, Instagram, check out my podcast. If you have a specific topic you want me to discuss, either here on The Mighty or on my um, podcast. Uh, I would be happy to, you know, have that conversation with you all in the future. Um, I appreciate you all. I think that I will be here in two weeks. That's probably what is going to be happening. So Monday, the 25th um, of October, right here at 1 p.m., um, will be the next conversation like this. And I really look forward to checking you guys all out then. So again, thank you. I will connect with you all offline and um, be kind to yourself this week because there's a lot going on and uh, and all the feelings that you're feeling, we're feeling them too. And I'm here for you. And, um, and I appreciate you showing up for yourself today um, because I think that that's really key is to like do these check-ins to show up for yourself. So I'm proud of you for doing that. I'd be proud of myself, myself pack on the back, pat on the back. And um, yes, be kind to everyone. I will see you guys in two weeks.